Hello everyone, welcome to today's class. So this will be a short video on the topic of permutation and combination. I have also made a demo video for this topic. And today I'll try to cover the theory as well as some shortcuts, as well as some questions of the last year. And I hope you will enjoy this session. I hope you will uh, watch the whole video and it will be productive for you all. And I hope you will be able to get the plus four marks for your J mains. And the topic will be permutation and combination. So the biggest problem which I have faced, which I have seen students facing too, is that when they see the question, they don't analyze the question and they just skip the question because they just know one or two tricks. And if they're not being able to apply that trick, they just skip that question and they just waste their time by even seeing that question, you know. So whenever you analyze one, so what is the first thing you need to do in permutation and combination is you need to first analyze the question and then you should start doing that. So before starting, I would like to give my introduction to you all. So all of you know, uh, some of you must be knowing my name, that is Krishvi, Krishvi Srivastav. So you can call me Krishvi and I'm an engineer, I'm a software developer. Okay, I work as a software developer and what I'm doing here, it's like a hobby to me. So I come here uh, and teach you guys maths on different, different topics because I have been loving maths since my childhood. So when I was given this opportunity, I thought why to waste it, you know, I can just make it work and I'll just try. So I hope you are enjoying with me and I hope I am also enjoying the session and let's see how this journey goes you and me together. Let's hope we will be successful and like obviously I told you the engineer thing and what is the aim? The aim is obviously to provoke your thought process and break all the barriers which stops you and me from growing more every day. So the main aim is like you should always cut off anything or any person who is stopping you from growing who is making you believe that you are not made for this. No. You are made for anything, okay? The possibilities is like you don't even know what are the possibilities which are waiting for you all. So whenever something makes you feel that you are not good enough, then maybe that thing is not good enough and that is making you feel down. So to avoid that, cut that thing off straightforward. So now talk more about myself and you. Now we are talking about permutation and combination. Let permutation and combination also enjoy some attention by us. So Firstly, what is permutation and combination guys? Now, many of you know the definition and you will just start telling me the definition. No, I'm not going to waste your time by telling you the definition and anything. The one thing is permutation and combination. What is the difference and how do you know that where you have to apply the uh, permutation and where do you have to apply the combination? Okay. So, where you have to apply permutation is whenever you have the arrangement thing to be done, in a question okay firstly you have to choose something and then you have to arrange then you can apply the permutation question okay and when you have to only select some things when you have to select when you have to only choose you don't have to care about the arrangement okay you don't care about the arrangement that is where the combination comes okay so combination straightforwardly when you see that you have to choose this is among these people you just straightforwardly choose combination and when you know that you have to arrange these people in a line and this 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 this, this these are some conditions so whenever the arrangement comes in the question you have to straightforwardly apply the permutation thing and that is where you have to choose where you have to apply the combination and where you have to apply the permutation straightforward thing one question is clear that i don't know when to apply permutation and when to apply combination you got the answer now you can solve the question by like now you know when you have to choose the combination and when you have to choose the permutation okay now telling you the uh, the notation okay so the permutation it can be written like this the combination can be written like ncrc stands for combination here and npr stands for permutation here okay so what is the formula for npr what is the formula for npr the formula for npr looks like n factorial all of you must be knowing the n factorial and then we have n minus r factorial okay this is the formula of permutation when you, 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 uh, you can calculate it by n factorial upon n minus r factorial and what is the formula for ncr the formula for ncr looks like n factorial upon r factorial upon n minus r factorial okay guys and one thing more when you see that permutation and combination and you feel like you're going to skip this question you should not skip permutation and combination because permutation and combination is such a topic that is never going to leave you guys. In fact, being a software developer, I used to solve the aptitude questions for the company clearance exam. There also I used to see permutation and combination and I'll tell you the majority of the questions were based on permutation and combination and for anyone 
with a strong intermediation combination they can clear the aptitude test very easily so for any exam you do you can solve the aptitude questions when you know permutation combination when you have the graphs on permutation combination when your basics are clear so it's a very important chapter for your life okay not only in your 10th 12th board exams also in your je exams also in your upcoming exams you are going to face in your future too there also permutation combination is always going to come and it's never going to leave you so if you think that you're going to leave this thing you you are only leaving this topic for some time and when you know that this is going to work this is going to work as a benefit for you all then why to just leave this topic you can just you know nothing is tough guys nothing is tough all you need to do is just give itself a time okay so we talked about how you donate the permutation and combination okay now i'll just write some formulas for you all and okay so npr obviously you know the relation between npr and ncr that is ncr into r factorial okay how do we write it because obviously when we multiply here in the ncr the r factorial it becomes npr see r factorial gets cancelled when you multiply it with ncr so how do you write the relation between permutation and combination the relation between permutation and combination can be written like npr is equals to ncr into r factorial i'm sorry if i sound like i'm in a hurry but no i'm just trying to cover up the basic things for you all so that i can tell you some important questions and uh, across the traditional methods i can also tell you some shortcuts too so this is about the relation between npr and ncr which is npr is equals to ncr into r factorial also i'm writing some more formulas that is n i hope all of you must be knowing this you have seen this formula in the series also nc0 nc0 nc1 plus nc2 which is equals to 2 to the power n you know that series so uh, it's it's used in binomial theorem as well okay so nc c you know the combination thing it's used in uh, binomial theorem then it's relating okay so you should not skip this topic this is the main thing you should not okay nc n minus r so how can it be written as ncr this is another formula that this is the relation nc n minus r is equals to ncr nc r plus nc these are very important formulas because when you see this in the question you can easily assume this thing when you see any relation forming that nc5 plus nc4 you can just write it like this and you know it so this is going to uh, you know this is going to save you time this is going to make your solution efficient okay so you should remember this form these formulas okay now n to the power n minus 1 c r minus 1 is equals to n minus r plus 1 n c r minus 1 okay these are some important formulas and i tell you this is a very important page for you all so if you have not been remembering this then you should remember all these formulas okay you should remember all these formulas i highlight that because you should not skip this thing important you can take a screenshot too okay so these are definitely going to come in obviously it's not straight forward okay what is nc5 plus nc6 no it's not going to come like this it will be a part of a question in which you will solve and this is going to come across and when you will know these formulas you can easily solve those things okay i hope i'm clear to you all so now let's move forward so now where do we use the combination thing and why you do we use it i am just writing the things the, the important notes for it okay so here i am telling you about the combination then i'll tell you about the permutation and then we will jump to the questions also i'll tell you some uh, division between the problem so that you can choose which type of problem it is and which solution you need to apply it okay so the combination looks like number of ways of selection of r objects this is how the question is going to be how do you select the number of uh, how do you select n toffees in this 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 number okay number of ways of selection of r object out of n distinct objects okay out of n distinct objects so this is ncr simple thing when you see this question ncr solve it okay now total number of i'll tell you about the series this is also used in binomial theorem okay total number of selections out of n distinct objects the total number of selection which can happen is 2 to the power n because you know the series that is nc0 
plus n c one you know zero object chosen one object chosen two object chosen three object chosen tak 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 till the n objects are chosen what is the what is it equal to it gets equal to two to the power n this is also used in binomial theorem i hope you remember that thing i have made you studied binomial theorem as well and even if you if if even if you have not studied from me then also it's a very basic thing and i hope you know it okay so now uh, this was the about uh, uh, combination uh, permutation uh, combination thing okay now okay okay one thing more one thing more here we talked about distinct objects okay just a second here we talked about distinct objects so where we will talk about identical objects that is going to be equal to 1 why because you know whenever you choose anything which is identical see there are five red balls which are identical and whatever you choose is going to be always equal to 1 like what are what what are going to be the ways because these are not distinct if it is if if something is given to be identical then how does it matter whatever you choose and which way you choose okay so it is asked number of ways so number of ways it can be only one because everything is identical so if you choose any of the ball it's going to be the same thing okay so that is why the number of ways of selection of you know sometimes this question comes and people just solve it they, uh, and they just solve ncr they just lose their plus 4 marks okay so you have to remember this thing whenever this identical word is used all you have to do is just pick one you are done with the question now talking about permutation so first thing when the all objects are distinct here so now when all objects are distinct and you have to ask like number of ways of arrangement of p objects number of ways of arranging simple thing just write the factorial number of ways of arranging p objects it's going to be p factorial simple thing whenever like you have to arrange uh, six girls in a row six factorial that is it six position six girls six factorial this is how you do it okay second question if some are like objects that means some are the like objects and some are different that is always equal to this is uh, something uh, i'll just tell you example after writing this question p factorial upon m factorial into n factorial m objects are alike n objects are alike so this is the formula which has been used how do we use this formula i'll give you one example where you use this formula see whenever you have question for example you have this question of arranging the words of teeth okay so you have the arrangement of word teeth okay so you can arrange teeth now what are the positions that is you just write the block t e e t e, h 1 2 3 4 5 there are five letter words okay five letter words now e and e are same t and t are same and h are same so what you can do here is simple thing simple thing see what you can do here is five letter words is right here five factorial okay you are seeing that these two letters are identical these two letters are identical and these the, it 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 will act like a group okay it will act like a group so what you can do here is you can just simply write here 2 factorial upon 2 factorial that is it guys because e and e are two times happening so for, for first is for e 2 factorial and then another is for t so this is one example of this i have just written this example right now i was i did not think about it earlier so this example came to my mind and this is how you just write the permutation of a word whenever something is asked that how can be the uh, uh, how is the number of ways of arranging this word okay so this is how you just arrange it okay i hope this is clear i hope this example was clear enough for you all now what i am going to talk about is the type of problem which is asked okay so the type excuse me so the type of problems the type of problems are first is the gap method and second is the block method okay 
Block method, I already told you in this example of teeth and gap method is whenever you have to, uh, whenever something is like that, no two person can sit together in that way you can use the gap method. Now, I'm telling you about the, some special cases, okay. So special cases looks like distribution of distinct objects. Now this is very very important whenever you have distributive problems this is very important if you know this formula the question comes out to be in 2 or 3 seconds this is known as a distributive problem okay so distribution of distinct objects the formula comes out to be m to the power m where m is non variable and n is variable okay So how do you like number of ways of distributing n distinct objects among m person? Okay. This is how you write among M person. M is something which is fixed because person cannot be changed. Okay. But objects are something variable. So that is why you write N to the power M. Just remember M is which is cannot be changed and N is something which can be changed. Okay. Now one thing more the circular arrangement thing. So how do you arrange it that number of ways of arranging n distinct objects is n minus 1 factorial whenever you have anything which should be arranged in a circular way uh, number of ways in, in in circular okay and whenever you have to choose between anti-clockwise and if it is asked number of anti-clockwise or clockwise that is going to be equal to see the total number of ways is n minus 1 factor so whenever you divide 2 that is going to be equal to if it is anti-clockwise or clockwise because anti-clockwise plus clockwise is equals to n minus 1 factorial and anti-clockwise is equals to clockwise so simple things is divided by 2 and you will get the number of anti-clockwise arrangements or you will get the number of clockwise arrangements okay so let's just do some questions uh, quickly okay so the questions comes let me choose a tough one here. The number of four letter words with or without meaning that can be formed from the 11 letters of the word examination is. Okay, let's just do this question. This was this question was asked in J means 2020. Okay. So I'll just write the question. The number of four letter words like me with or without meaning you don't even care to about if it is meaningful or not about the word that is only four letter group you can just assume that can be formed from the 11 letter from the 11 letters of the word examination this is a very traditional question comes every now and then okay the number of four letter words that can be formed from the 11 letters of the word examination is so firstly you need to write what, what how many types of letters we have here so we have here is examination we have one e okay we have two a's we have two a's here okay we have two i's here okay and also we have here is we have two n's here okay now we have e we have x we have m we have p and we have o so you have to choose the four letter words okay four letter words one two three four now what you can think about is you have to uh, fill in four letters here okay now one thing is possible that all the four letters are different 
see because here we have some repeating letters as well so one possible case is we have all the all the distinct letters here so firstly we will write all the distinct letters that is all letters are different okay so see that means here we will only choose one a one i one n no, we cannot choose two of any of them because if we will choose any two then that means that it is not going to be distinct so what are the number of letters we have one two three four five six seven eight eight letters we have okay so eight letters and four letters we have to fill in so how what can be the possible way the possible way is eight p four because here we have to care about the arrangement because the arrangement differs and the word will be different so that is why we will use here p okay so that is all letters are different secondly when two same and two different because here we have two and two and two so that means that may, maybe there is a possibility when two letters will be same and two letters will be same that is the word can be equal to a a i i i i n n something like that so two same and two different okay no 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 two same and two same this was the case this will be the third case So two same and two same. Are we going to write it? We have two same and two same. That means what we can do here is one, two, three. That means three letters are being are uh, do have their duplicates. So what we can do here is we can choose three from those three letters. We can choose two letters. Simple thing. Three, C, two. Okay. And now what do we have here is we have four letters, but obviously two letters and two letters are same. So what did I tell you? Two factorial into two factorial. That is going to be the you know arrangement because four letters and two and two are repeating. That is C E E A A. So how do you arrange it? I told you four letters, four factorial upon these are repeating two factorial into two factorial. This is the example of this that why why we wrote this and. what can we see we here we have used only two letters that means we have to choose only two letters and what is the possibility of same same letters repeating that is 2a 2y 2n so what we can write here is we have three options and we have to choose two letters among them so 3c 2 and that is going to be the arrangement now what is the third case the third case is two same and two different that is also the possibility that one letter is chosen from this and uh, another three letters uh, another two letters are chosen from this so how we can write is that two same and two different so i told you what is the possibility two same and two different so how it can be equal three e to e um, e is not repeating it's just an example you get confused here i'll just change the letter uh, i i is repeating i can write here right so for example you see n n repeating and you have used this letter x n m okay so we have chosen n letter here and what is the possibility what can else be there if you have same uh, if you have to put two same letters you can write here 2 i 2 a and you have 2 n here so we have three options and we have to choose one letter among them because one is going to repeat it so we can use 3 c 1 okay 3 c 1 done and now one letter is choosing among those two uh, options now what are the another letters left 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 seven letters left and you have to choose 7 c 2 okay why you have chosen this why you have chosen this c and also when you have this arrangement that is n n x m what is going to be the arrangement looking like 4 factorial upon this is repeating so 2 factorial that is it so 4 factorial upon 2 factorial this is going to be the arrangement okay how did i write this i hope it is clear now what is the uh, number of four, what is going to be the total these are some different cases so we will just add on these cases and we will get the answer i hope this is clear to you i will just repeat it one more time see all letters are different all letters are different that means all the four letters are distinct so what you can do here is you ca cannot choose among these so these are the number of letters and from that you can choose four letters that is One a, one i, one n. We just took one one of all these, okay? And we just used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that is eight letters and chosen four letters among them. Two same and two same. This can be the uh, case. So two same and two same. That means here we have chosen among this only. So how we can choose that is we have to choose these other letters which are repeating two times. And we can only use here two letters because we have two same, two same. 
so what we can do here is we have to choose two among these three okay three letters and we can only choose two letters that is going to be repeated so two letters are only going to be chosen among these three letters so simple thing 3c2 and what is going to be the arrangement looking like that is 4 factorial upon 2 factorial into 2 factorial two same and two different two same and two different that will be going to look like n n into m n n x m these uh, these are the four different layers sorry two same and two different letter so how is the arrangement going to look like four factorial upon this n n n is being repeated so we will divide it by two factorial this is the arrangement and how do you choose this letter one letter is have to repeat two times okay so what is the possibility we have two letters from that word that is three word. there are three letters which are which have two number of time they are occurring so obviously i can choose one among these three so that is 3c1 and what are the another letters that are left obviously we have again just like we choose eight before we have this seven letters now left and we can choose any of the letters we have to choose two letters among them so we have chosen 7c2 and obviously i told you the arrangement first now what we can do is we, we just have to add all the possibilities and we got the answer so that was it for today guys and i hope you have enjoyed the permutation combination i covered all the topics what you can do is you can just cover the circular arrangement theory you know that this is this is the formula which we which is going to be used whenever you see any distinct object question that you have to divide you have to uh, firstly you can take the example here as number of ways of distributing n trophies among five person okay n trophies among five person this is going to be the example number of ways of distributing five distinct prizes among three people okay you can use it here straightly what is going to be the answer three is something which is non-variable five is something which is going to be variable three to the power five that is going to be the answer straightforwardly the formula used here types of problem gap method block method you have to identify permutation you know where you have to use you know the denotion and you know p factor one n factor n factorial we used here we used in the last question this concept you know the distinct and identical objects difference whenever you have to choose in between identical objects the number of ways is always going to be one and whenever you have to choose the n distinct objects you have to choose like write ncr that is the formula of n factorial upon r factorial upon n minus r factorial you know the series of nc0 and that is going to sum up to 2 to the power n this is a very important formula for you all these are some important formulas which are going to be used in the question in the part of the question when you will solve if you know this thing the question is going to become easy for you all permutation combination denotion divided by definition we are done for today guys and i hope you have enjoyed the session this was a short video where i tried to cover all the topics as well as did some question that covered some topics which i taught you right now so this was it for today i hope you have enjoyed the session so for anyone who has liked this video even a bit just like the video right now subscribe to our channel and i hope you will enjoy our session see you soon and take care as well bye bye